useful diversions the various delights and pleasures of the bodily senses useful for mental recreation by emmanuel swedenborg this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org the following reading is from the universal anthology volume six Emanuel Swedenborg, the Swedish philosopher, born in Stockholm, January 29, 1688, died in London, March 29, 1772. His father was the Bishop of Skara in West Gothland, and the son was reared in an atmosphere of piety. He was graduated with the degree of Ph.D. from the University of Uppsala in 1709 and after travelling in europe he was appointed by charles the second extraordinary assessor in the college of mines and was subsequently elevated to the equestrian order of the house of nobles among his many published works are opera philosophica et mineralia seventeen thirty four protomus de infinito seventeen thirty four economy of the animal kingdom seventeen forty the animal kingdom seventeen forty five arcana celestia twelve volumes seventeen forty nine to seventeen fifty six heaven and hell seventeen fifty eight the intermediate world seventeen fifty eight divine love and wisdom seventeen sixty three the four doctrines seventeen sixty three the divine providence seventeen sixty four the apocalypse revealed seventeen sixty six conjugal love and its chaste delights seventeen sixty eight the doctrines of the new church seventeen sixty nine the intercourse between the soul and the body seventeen sixty six and the true christian religion seventeen seventy one from the editor such diversions are social intercourse with conversations upon various public private and household affairs and walks with the sight of houses and palaces and trees and flowers in gardens woods and fields delightful for their various beauty and magnificence and of men and birds and flocks and also spectacles of various kinds representative of the moral virtues and of events from which something of the divine providence appears these and similar things are for the sense of sight then there are various musical harmonies and songs which affect the mind according to their correspondences with affections and in addition to these there are decorous jestings which exhilarate the mind these for the sense of hearing and there are likewise social meals feasts and entertainments and various accompanying pleasantries and games too at home played with dice balls and cards and dances also at weddings and at festive gatherings these and such things are useful diversions for the recreation of the mind and in addition to these there are various labors of the hands which give motion to the body and divert the mind from the works of its calling and the reading also of interesting books on historical and doctrinal subjects which give delight and of the news in newspapers these are diversions for every one who is in office or employment. They may therefore be called the diversions of offices or employments. But really they are diversions of the affections from which one engages in his employment. There is an affection in every employment, and it gives the spirit energy and keeps the mind intent upon its work or study this if it be not relaxed becomes dull and its earnestness flags as salt that has lost its savour 
so that it has no pugnancy or relish or as a bended bow which unless it be unbent loses the power that it derives from its elasticity just so the mind kept from day to day in the same ideas without variety so the eyes when they look only at one object or continually upon one color for to look continually at a thing which is black or continually at red or at white destroys the sight thus if one looks continually at the snow the sight is destroyed but it is enlivened if he looks in succession or at the same time upon many colors every form delights by its varieties as a garland of roses of different colors arranged in beautiful order hence it is that the rainbow is more charming than the light itself when the mind has been continually upon the stretch at its work it aspires to rest and when it rests it descends into the body and seeks there its pleasures corresponding to its mental operations which the mind chooses according to its interior state in the viscera of the body the interior things of the body derive their pleasures chiefly from the senses of sight hearing smell taste and touch delights which are in fact drawn from outward things but yet insinuate themselves into the single parts of the body which are called members and viscera from hence and from no other source have they their delights and pleasures the single fibres and single tissues of fibres the single capillary vessels and thence the common vessels and so all the viscera in common derive their own delights which a man then perceives not singly but universally as one common sensation but just as is the mind within them from the head such are the delights pure or impure spiritual or natural heavenly or infernal for within in every sensation of the body is the love of his will with its affections and the understanding makes him to perceive their delights for the love of the will with its affections constitutes the life of every sensation and the perception thence of the understanding produces the sensation hence come all delights and pleasures for the body is a concatenated work and one form sensation communicates itself like a force applied to a chain with its single links and as a form which has flown together from uninterrupted series if the affection of charity is in them then all the above-mentioned diversions are for its recreation spectacles and plays musical harmonies and songs and all the beauties of fields and gardens and social intercourse in general the affection for use remains interiorly within them which while it is thus resting is gradually renewed a longing for one's work breaks or ends them for the lord flows into them from heaven and renews and he also gives an interior sense of pleasure in them which they who are not in the affection of charity know nothing of he breathes into them as it were a fragrance or sweetness perceptible only to oneself a fragrance by which is meant a spiritual pleasantness and sweetness by which is meant spiritual delight pleasantness is predicated of wisdom and of the perception of the understanding therefrom and delight is predicated of love and of the affection therefrom of the will they have not these who are not in the affection of charity because the spiritual mind is closed and in the degree that they depart from charity the spiritual mind as to its voluntary part is as if stuffed with a glutinous substance to those who have only an affection for honor that is who do the works of their calling merely for the sake of reputation 
that they may be praised and promoted these diversions are similarly outward they work are vigilant in their occupation and perform uses in abundance not however from a love of use but from the love of self thus not from love to the neighbor but from the love of glory they may also feel a delight in the work of their calling but it is an infernal delight to their eyes it may counterfeit heavenly delight for they are both alike outwardly but their delight is full of what is undelightful for they have no rest and peace of mind except when they are thinking of fame and honor and when they are being honored and adored when they are not thinking of these things they rush into voluptuous pleasures into drunkenness luxury fornication into hatred vindictiveness and slander of the neighbor if he does not do them honor and if from time to time they are not raised to higher honors they come to loathe their employments and to give themselves up to leisure and become idlers and after their departure from the world they become demons to those who have only an affection for gain these are also diversions but they are carnal inspired within only by the delight of opulence such men are careful prudent industrious especially if they are merchants or workmen and if in official positions they are vigilant in their duties which pertain to their offices and sell uses if judges they sell justice if priests they sell salvation to them lucre is the neighbor for the sake of office they love lucre and they love the lucre derived from their office they that are high in office may sell their country and even betray their army and their fellow citizens to the enemy whence it is evident that their love is in the diversions above mentioned they are full of rapine and in so far as they are not in fear of the civil laws or public punishments and for the sake of gain the loss of reputation they rob and steal outwardly they are sincere but inwardly insincere they look upon men as a tiger or wolf upon sheep and lambs which they devour if they can they do not know that the good of use has any reality there is an infernal delight and pleasure in their diversions they are like asses that see nothing pleasant in meadows and fields but what they eat be it wheat or barley in the ear but these things are said of the avaricious but to those who perform the duties of their calling only for the sake of support and the necessaries of life and those who perform them only for a name that they may be celebrated and those who perform them only for the sake of the emoluments to the end that they may grow rich and may live generously the above mentioned diversions are the only uses they are corporeal and sensual men their spirits are unclean lusts and appetites they do the works of their calling for the sake of the diversions they are human beasts dead and their duties are burdens to them they seek substitutes to do the work of their office while they retain the name and the salary when not engaged in the above-mentioned diversions they are idlers and sloths they lie in bed thinking of nothing but how they may find companions to talk eat and drink with they are a public burden all such after death are shut up in workhouses where they are under a judge administrator who daily appoints them the work they are to do and if they do not do it no food or clothing or bed is given them and this is continued until they are driven to do something useful end of useful diversions by emmanuel swedenborg